This is in the press channel of Akashwani Delhi. In the backdrop of International Women's Day, we are now bringing to you a discussion on women scientists in science and technology development. The participants are Dr. Rashmi Sharma, Head National Council of Science and Technology Communication Division, Department of Science and Technology. Dr. Anna Dogra, Scientist, Policy and Communication, ICMR, Department of Health Research, Government of India. And Dr. Diksha Gupta, Director, Global Strategy for Society Programs, American Chemical Society. This discussion is being initiated and moderated by Dr. Rashmi Sharma. आकाशवाणी के सभी श्रोताओं को नमस्कार एवं अंतर्राष्ट्रीय महिला दिवस की हार्दिक बधाई विमेन आर द बैकबोन ऑफ फैमिलीज एंड कम्युनिटीज अक्रॉस द ग्लोब बाय नर्चरिंग फैमिलीज एंड चिल्ड्रन इन एडिशन टू देयर रोल एज केयर गिवर्स विमेन हैव आल्सो कंट्रीब्यूटेड टू द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी इफ यू सी द साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजिकल डिस्कवरीज मैडम क्यूरी शी हैज गॉट द नोबल प्राइज टू टाइम्स शी इज द ओनली वुमेन हू हैज गॉट द नोबल प्राइज टू टाइम्स in 1903 and 1911 for uh, her discovery of radiation phenomenon and discovery of radium and polonium and uh, there are many other women who have got the nobel prize as per the statistics women make up to 43% of the total stem graduate but that is not reflected in the workforce as per the global gender gap report 2023 women comprise of 29.2% of the stem workforce as compared to 49.5% of non stem workforce in india this percentage is only 27% so my question to my fellow participants is that why high percentage in stem education is not reflected in more women taking up jobs in related sectors what are the reasons and how we can address this gap थैंक यू मैम आई थिंक मेरे को यहाँ पे एक पॉइंट पुट करना है कि इन स्पेसिफिकली स्टेम एरियाज वी हैव अ वेरी लॉन्ग यू नो एजुकेशन पीरियड बाय द टाइम एजुकेशन एंड्स ड्यू टू द पी एच डी एंड ऑल वी आर वीमेन आर जनरली एट सच यू नो टाइट रोप दैट वेदर दे हैव टू गो टू द फैमिली वे और यू नो फोकस ऑन देयर करियर्स सो आई थिंक दैट इज अ मेजर पॉइंट दैट actually makes the difference that is the cut point that actually differentiates that why are women workforce lesser in stem yes so i completely agree with you aur uh, agar isko aur thoda sa uh, broader perspective mein dekhe तो कल्चरली भी सोसाइटीज़ हमारे यहाँ जिस तरीके से वायर्ड हैं कि मतलब इतनी उम्र तक ये हो जाना चाहिए फिर उतनी उम्र तक वो हो जाना चाहिए तो वो पूरा एक जो पर्सपेक्टिव है ना इस सिचुएशन को और कॉम्प्लिकेट करता है पी में अगर आप देखोगे रेशियो तो इट्स नियरली फिफ्टी फिफ्टी एट लॉर्ड ऑफ द प्लेसेस फिर पोस्ट डॉक में और कम हो जाएगा असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर या इंडस्ट्री जॉब में और कम हो जाएगा और लीडरशिप रोल में तो ये बहुत ही लीन हो जाता है वी इवन हैव सिंगल डिजिट रिप्रेजेंटेशन सो वट हैपन्स ए यू एंटर्ड लेट देन दी नंबर ऑफ ईयर्स यू हैड टू कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट टू गेट अ पोजिशन डज ऑल्सो नॉट प्रोवाइड एपल टू एपल कंपेरिजन आपका मानना है कि कल्चरली वी नीड टू इम्प्रूव अपॉन अपर आर सोसाइटल नेटवर्क और साइंस जॉब शुड नॉट बी जस्ट सीन एज अ जॉब राइट हर व्यक्ति साइंटिस्ट है अगर आप देखोगे घर में मतलब अचार यू नो दिस इज लाइक अ बिग फूड केमिस्ट्री एंड अ साइंस इन टू दैट हाउ वी यूज टू डू एट द वॉज अ नॉलेज दैट वॉज ट्रांसफर्ड फ्रॉम यू नो जनरेशन टू जनरेशन and now if you go into medical science if you go into the health science pickle plays a very important role in the whole digestive chemistry yes fundamentally we had been catering to all these things for a long time right now we started asking these question of why that happens we went into biology research we went into like a medical research and when there was a time for us to you know to take to the next level we again got back into the circle where we started so what happens we are into the vicious circle so it means that uh, indigenous knowledge systems also play an important Absolutely. role and uh, for the societal uh, development as well as for the uh, ascent development and i took the pickle example because i'm too much into pickle these days <laughs> and i'm exploring like you know pickles like anything and i'm feeling a uh, pickle in itself should be like a big domain yeah sure इसके आगे मैं पूछना चाहूंगी कि दैट वीमेन आर अंडर रिप्रेजेंटेड इन लीडरशिप पोजीशंस एंड सीनियर पोजीशंस इन स्टेम एरिया and only 14% of the executive positions in stem industries are taken up by the women and only 8% of the stem ceos are women so this is is the direct question to you diksha because you are a director global strategy for societal programs at acs uh, which is one of the uh, global organization and oldest organization so how do you see it what is your opinion why leadership positions are not given or taken up by the women so i'll say it's both right and 
there are stereotypes about leaderships which are also culture specific which are also company specific when you have a solid pipeline at a entry level and if you tag employees early on beyond their gender for a specific path you would have a very good pipeline so for a change in my organization we have a huge proportion of women in leadership role okay. at all levels right mm-hmm. so even in my team we have 60% of women and only 40% of men and even if you see the executive leadership of like my organization there are more women than men so this is a great example of as well how it happened to address the issue of fights not happening so this comes to breaking the stereotypes and grooming early on and provide that mentorship and support to women when you see a capability or a talent available and would you believe i got the most challenging role of my career when i was pregnant and about to deliver a child there could have been a stereotype like you know she is a woman she is now vulnerable how she would be able to take a role so at that time i would say it was given to me and i was mentally ready and supported to take that role otherwise it could have been a skip this uh, specific question was for you because you are uh, very young and you have taken this leadership role at a uh, global organization so this will um, you know, motivate uh, the other women who will be listening this program to take up uh, this challenge and uh, means survive in this ecosystem something i want to add i think sometime as a women we are multitasker most of the time we do lot of things we think way more than we should be we think about too many things in advance and imagine a future and get into a world which probably is not real and we put so much pressure and you know stress on ourselves imagining all unrealistic things and that is our internal barrier so i encourage my fellow you know women or you know the i would say the community i am part of don't just overthink at times we under uh, estimate ourselves and we overthink and you know put lot of internal barriers even there is no barrier outside so more than the given i think we have to play a uh, more focus on taking we should not underestimate ourselves and you know there are so many reports when you find out at linkedin i was reading one article and it was written when there is a leadership role out men see if 50% of the match in their role and skill set they will apply women even at the 80 90% will think shall i really apply for that role true very true so this we is need more. to have the confidence within ourselves and so. should be ready to take more risk and stop underplaying ourselves right i mean mm-hmm. everyone learn on the job we should not be all the time perfect before taking a job and you know really getting stressed by the role i mean we we can learn it on the way and that's where the peer system support system and mentorship is very helpful we should not be overly critical of ourselves so what i get from your uh, response is that we should take women as individuals not as the gender and uh, we should break the stereotypes absolutely and uh, deal with the case by case break, the, break yeah. the internal barriers by absolutely. ourselves absolutely so my next question is uh, to ina do you feel that mentorship and sponsorship initiatives can lead to more women in leadership role in stem i agree with that mm-hmm. a good mentorship definitely paves a you know great way for the women you know they will actually nurture them to take up those roles and to give them confidence that yes they can do it so that definitely helps apart from the mentorship there is of course at one way we are saying of course we should take women as individual but again as a society level we should understand that we have women have generally at, at least in the current level a bit more you know responsibilities than men so you know uh, availability of you know support systems at workplaces that is very important so along with mentorship a support system to take care of you know uh, if you have if women have kids so there there should be a crutch facility there so all these things are everything round the way and of course with the help of family your your spouse all these factors help in taking and you know bringing making up that confidence that you can take up this you know leadership roles that helps and uh, in your opinion who can be these mentors like who can encourage uh, the women to take up leadership role i think this is a very uh, deep question and the answer is uh, very broad but i'll try to be specific see mentor could be anyone your mentor could be your child your friend your mother your brother it could be anyone so we also have to get away of the stereotype of a mentor a mentor is not required to be someone who is very successful in a big position or a title i mean you can have those people as inspiration but a mentor is someone who can really take the best out of you 
can motivate you can encourage you can really you know uh, take you beyond the doubt and sometimes your child can have those conversations with you which are probably the most motivating and encouraging words for you so we have to find those strengths and motivation for ourselves and because it is highly variable depending on the environment we are in yeah very true because uh, as you earlier said that we don't have the confidence internal confidence so um, we have to uh, break that barrier and we have to have confidence in ourselves and also one thing rashmi i feel we should not hesitate to reach out to people because we should really look for know. help we should ask for support we should not be bearing the burden of not reaching out for help people will only help us when we ask and there is no shame in asking that's one thing second thing we cannot do it all we need to understand that still as an indian women we are at the juncture of society where we are the flag bearer of a generation transformation we have a one leg in you know our culture our values how the families are set up which i'm immensely proud of but on the other side we are leading at the global uh, stage what does that mean my brain is continuously you know spinning around like all these aspects and where it require like a big you know balance so we need to be switching those mental gears much quicker than we think and that's where a lot of awareness of it's okay to miss out at times i feel a guilt of not not being a great mother right and that may subconsciously be impede me to not take bigger roles because i want to be the best mother i want to be like a best wife i want to be like the best this so we are our own victim so maybe we have to take uh, the opportunities uh, step by step Absolutely. and uh, uh, set our priorities and goals uh, in the beginning itself priority can change there are phases in priority maybe today my son could be my priority after 2 year my career would be my priority at another phase my certain skill could be my priority then family is a priority and there could be coexistence of priorities that is exactly i would like to add add on to that that not even year wise it can be even day wise exactly day-wise, one day <laughs> i have one day family can take a priority <laughs> the other day work can take of course you can work can be that is very important you know tend to yeah. and you have to of course leave it and take it so don't like break it here oh completely day-wise. agree and isn't it that's how we live yeah every, every single day, day are, every yeah. hour we choose yes. and that's a reality and sometimes it's feel you are the one no actually we all are together in this every single working women who is a mother runs a family has to make so many choices every single day true very true first thing i think ma'am i really believe that women should get rid of the guilt ah oh, that's yeah that is the major <laughs> factor which uh, means uh, i have harder. not i have not met a single woman working woman <laughs> who has you know don't have that guilt factor both ways hmm. when they are at home they feel guilty that we have not been we are not able to you know give 100% to our work and when at work they are guilty that they are not able to give 100% to you know home because you have account you have counterparts at each places males who are 100% definitely dedicated to work at least they look like <laughs> they look, whatever and females who are like full working you know home, home makers home managers who are taking care of their kids so when you see you those role models role models then you are actually you know at a loss that where do we belong to so i think everyone so first thing i think first thing first we need to get rid of this guilt i think we need to accept ourselves and you know really start being perfect and you know doing everything perfect all the time and i think that's an outcome of overthinking surely mm-hmm. we are not doing enough right and who is there to tell us whether we are doing it, it is, enough or it not it is i think that it is the society which is creating the boundaries for us that you need to be perfect as a wife you need to be perfect as a mother you need to be perfect as a caregiver so those goals are set by the society in our plan of action taking the profession is the last thing that is my opinion so or it becomes in- more like an individual choice yes, right yes. you are pursuing your career that's your life objective but you have all these set of things as well mm-hmm. which need to be approved and taken care by i think that's why even it's more challenging uh, for women in type of society like ours it's not just the professional front we have to uh, navigate through it is a lot more personal we have to figure it out but this scenario is global because if you see the global data it, it also says the same thing it is not that india is far behind mm-hmm. uh, is it is globally the responsibility lies uh, on the shoulders of a yeah. woman but so, i think there are uh, ecosystem in terms of you know child care support yeah, because of there, like you know the population there. size and all those things i think is slightly better so when you are at work you are more mentally relaxed and you know at least your child is in a better situation otherwise that especially for new moms right when you return at work after 
having a baby mm-hmm. could be like altogether a different experience and also i have felt when we go through these steps we feel how it you know look like otherwise we could be very unempathetic as well towards the situation so when women are into the leadership role i think they bear the double responsibility to make sure if they have women in the workforce they think proactively and create that environment that encourage more women to deal those challenges proactively yeah like we have talked about the global scenario so what is your opinion about this uh, government of india schemes and programs do you think that those are enough and those are addressing the challenges of the women in stem i think they are wonderful initiatives wonderful definitely at least uh, you know way step ahead is definitely you know it's a thing to start and even if not now if we cannot see the, the uh, you know the differences right now the changes right now but in next few years probably down the line it will be more clearer and we will be seeing more representation from women you know having these special specially uh, designed schemes for women in place to in icmr do you have such schemes uh, we have ma'am we have a, a women scientist scheme where women who have taken uh, it's a dhr basically department of health research scheme where uh, uh, women who have taken break can apply for uh, the women scientist scheme and they get uh, so it is similar to the on the lines of what department of science and technology yes yes um, so that is basically offering. health research that so is we we research. have a scheme called women scientist scheme which is for the women who have break in career mm-hmm. for uh, doing the phd's for doing their post doctorals and in fact they are given the opportunity to do ipr related course mm-hmm. so one year course for ipr mm-hmm. so then they are uh, put into the internship with the firms and they can do internship with the government institutions mm-hmm. so that because ipr is seen as a flexible uh, job opportunity so if they are empowered uh, with the, that kind of a um, skill so they can work from home also so that is why we started that scheme so i think that we are working on the similar right. lines so what is your opinion about uh, like uh, the initiatives of the government so because you are a outsider from <laughs> this uh, <laughs> so something which i wanted to bring a point is probably now is the time we should start paying attention to the outcome of input not necessarily the number for of hours and you know the days of the week one has to be in right and this is really a flexibility for a women who uh, has children and family because once you start having this performance metrics right or the impact of your work i think we can get away from this yardstick of you know the number of years and you know the number of hours and all those type of metrics which limit women participation and you know by having this flexibility we would have 50 million more people in the workforce because we are a country of 1.4 billion and right now the participation is 29% how much we are missing out mm-hmm. partly because of the framework and the system we have how it works for science so your suggestion is that we should stop um, having mandate limits yeah actually we should stop having a mandate on age limits we should get away from stereotype of everyone need to be physically present all the time everywhere mm-hmm. considering the size of this country considering how the digital technology is moving how the artificial intelligence is going now is the time to think about ways of engaging people where they can really contribute to the productivity this can actually work out with the uh, like the subjects which you have mentioned uh, like where you have to work with the computer and all but when you have to work with the in the area of research where you have to set up your experiments i think this might not work but flexi hours can definitely work you can allow them to come and go at their convenience and you should uh, uh, tell them to showcase their outcomes so that they know that this is my responsibility this is my project this is my research and i have to show the uh, outcome of that research whatever i am doing so if you give that responsibility onus on that woman maybe you will be able to see more outcomes so that's one part right even if you see in the stem ecosystem wet lab research is one element there are different type of activities and job role that can still contribute improving the quality of stem right there is a paper writing part there is a res- literature analysis part there is identifying innovation right and now we see we are third largest country in the startup can you imagine the amount of workforce we would need to scale these startups 
what if we have the type of job roles which are more supported by government into the short term schemes which encourage more women participation to support this ecosystem so maybe one opportunity for all of us to think and ponder is is there a possibility to expand the remit of these women scientist role is it only limited to go and doing uh, research in lab are there possibilities of creating other type of workforce or capacity building or resources which has important role in elevating stm ecosystem when we i think see a uh, stem ecosystem we only see as maybe the teaching opportunities in universities and academic institution or research institutions or research opportunities and maybe some of the roles in it sector and all because you will see that uh, maybe women are not there in certain areas like engineering civil engineering mechanical engineering so those are basically the barriers where they have barriers in their mind that they will not be able to uh, take up that kind of uh, subject mm-hmm. as a career so that is one uh, i think they they as you said that they have created their barriers by themselves no i think uh, in all this snt organizations of india they have like dbt has their uh, you know uh, the industrial uh, licensing the bcil they are the roles apart from uh, wet lab research that have been explored other than you know that can support the research environment even research governance research management all policy those things making, are like yes, policy making all these rules are already there lot of innovation based work because the direction let's say for example there is a semiconductor mission in india cyber physical security mission of india we are working on building a capacity True. and no one has a prescription of how to build that capacity i always feel until we uh, you know activate our dormant workforce there would never be enough capability and uh, volume in this country available that's why I, i strongly feel about thinking about alternative job roles in stem ecosystem in these short term schemes very true very rightly said uh, as you mentioned earlier that we are the third largest ecosystem of startups and in your opinion how women power can be used in this area and what should be our strategy see startup is what it's a problem solving tactic hmm? and we as a women i think have lot more problem on a daily basis to solve true very true. so by default i think our brain wiring and the type of reflexes we have is more you know figuring out so many things to do that again why not many women is related to that aspect was you mentioned because when you are into a scientific training you have a very long tail and then you reach to the point where you diverge so i think we need to introduce more startup concept at the masters level because you necessarily don't need a phd true and if we can tap early on with uh, women at their master stage whether it's a technology whether it's like you know in medical science or whether it's like the basic science natural science i mean phd is a great pursuit to further you know future research or academic research path but for a startup ecosystem i think even masters could be a very solid degree and then you start taking them onto a different research uh, uh, sorry different skill path that way you uh, involve them at the age where they still have several years to invest into before further diverting would at least give them like a very solid uh, career path and then you know they can take that liberty of diverting and then coming back at that point because they would have some solid skills which they can play around so uh, with this discussion i think we uh, can conclude that uh, we have lot of opportunities available for the women it is only that they need to have the confidence within themselves and they should not only look for the research careers they should look for the other innovation opportunities like startups and uh, other kind of job responsibilities like uh, policy and startup and maybe innovation, innovation. so they have lot more to do and uh, they have to have the confidence in Uh, themselves so with that we'll end this uh, discussion thank you very much thank you rashmi and thank you to akashwani for this kind invitation it was truly a fantastic discussion same here i agree you were listening to a discussion on women scientists in science and technology development participants were dr rashmi sharma head national council for science and technology communication division department of science and technology dr anna dogra scientist policy and communication icmr department of health research government of india and dr deeksha gupta director global strategy for society programs american chemical society the discussion was moderated by dr rashmi sharma produced by shri dilip jha this broadcast came to you from the indraprasth channel of akashwani delhi